then I'll tuck in there just uh, going up into the loft. Just there's uh, Dave Chorney's picture. There's the unfinished work. There's the kitty. More unfinished work. Not a bad definition for life. Always in a bed. Uh, I know that uh, I think uh, leaving the length on that one might be pretty good. Yeah, that seems a little, it may be a little too dark. We'll see. We'll know in a moment if it's a little bit brighter here. That may be okay. We got a candle here. And uh, I'm going to just kind of balance that. Here we're up in the loft. Didn't really give you much of a look around. I'm going to see if uh, this little lamp will turn on and maybe just provide a little bit of a little bit of maybe indirect light. But we don't know if it works or what, so we'll see. Look at that. That's probably a little better. I mean, it may just be you looking at a skylight. But it's been a long day of listening to people, hearing from people, and uh, have my uh, my Chad Bailey shirt on. So, how do you not feel good when you have a world grass healer? Of the uh, tea that some of you made with me this morning. I don't know what time this morning. It was just this morning. Uh, but I had that one little sip that you probably saw me have by the Healing Fairy Altar. And now I'm going to finally have some. I haven't eaten today except for a couple of nuts and raisins during, during a class. Well, last night was a a, um, a real challenge for people. So many people. Uh, some of them, the challenge came expectedly. Some of them not. And the challenges came in a variety of ways. And uh, hey, buddy, how you doing? Yeah. Do you want to come join us? Sure. Well, we got a little bit of room for you right here. Just if you want to meditate. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see the kitty. Hey, buddy. Yeah, it's a pretty good idea to have a meditation. Don't you think so? Sure, you want to sit with us? Well, sure. There he is. Yeah. He probably won't stay here long. This isn't usually a place he'll stay perched. Yeah, hey, buddy. Yeah. So anyway, it was a pretty difficult time and long, 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 many. Yep, and there's the very brief visit. I had a feeling. Yeah, good to see you, though. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, and so, uh, probably uh, spent a long period of time You know, I'd say 27 hours now, something like that. Just dealing with probably about 50 people on, uh, you know, sort of personal channels, messages and other messages and other messaging platforms and phone calls and so forth. And so I decided I'd uh, try and address a few people at once by doing this live thing and then this morning, I uh, did the live thing and just trying to um, take some comfort and ritual to find some semblance of balance. Uh, it's really helpful to have a, a, a sacred, relatively unchanging, we might oh, actually unchanging, place from which to have our perspective 
look out on things. So it isn't so much about countermanding a perspective, but it's really tuning into where your perspective is coming from. So the engineer of the train has vista, 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 new view, viewpoint, vista, 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 you know, as the train shows by, but we might imagine that the train conductor is the same human being that she's always been. But the perspective changes, you know, moment by moment. Every time the train makes a bend, she has a new perspective, but the one having the perspective isn't changing. And so this morning, the the ritual and the cleansing is to help us recover a sense of where the perspective comes from and then maybe sort of clear away our uh, view on where it is. So the sage, the tea, the smudging, the altar, the cat. By the way, that sideways video, I've just now, literally a very short time ago, gotten uh, uh, righted, like, you know, or lefted, depending. Uh, and I think it's uploading now to YouTube, and so that link should be live, and then you guys can not have the Terry Stiemsa problem of the crick in the neck. So anyway, uh, in both cases, uh, we sought soothing and solace in poetry, you know, from the sages. Uh, that's a really helpful thing to do when you're lost. And lost doesn't have to mean confused. Uh, lost can be angry, uh, frustrated, hurt, disappointed, agog. So lost in the sense of, you know, bearings. And so we tapped into those poems to help with that. But now a day has gone by and the moon has not crashed into the earth. And while I'm not saying everything is normal, and I'm not saying that you should feel that way or do, I'm saying that much is normal. I don't care to know to what degree or spend my time measuring it, but much is normal. For example, I made my tea and basically didn't have any for, you know, whatever it is now, 15, 14 hours. So that's not normal. But I'm in this loft that we've rebuilt. I'm sipping from the mug that was a gift from Felix Mimo, though those many years ago. A fellow Aikidoka. I always think of this as my cloudy mug. This was uh, right before I met his wife to be. Her name's Cloudy. And so, <clears throat> tonight, rather than seeking solace in another's poetry, I thought I'd help us return to ourselves and read our own poetry. So, I have my Florilegium here, and I suppose, since I don't really read it, almost ever, I will just kind of randomly pick one, assuming that there's a signal, because it's on the cloud, and who knows, and I will, it looks like maybe it'll read better this way, yeah, I don't know, and uh, I don't know if these will be winners, so... <laughs> <laughs> they may not be as apropos as uh, Stone Mountain, but it turns out it'll be easier this way because these have aged. So I apologize in advance if the poem is uh, inappropriate. It's not very likely to be, but I didn't really read through these and curate what I'm going to read to you. Uh, so... Here we go. <clears throat> this is 5,000 trees. 5,000 trees. She passed by, each and every peacock straight, 
proud and blooming, tall and unnoticed. Only one would lay down to gather up her attention. Across a river, leaves burned brown, bark crumble, board hollow, a billion twitchy nests. Five thousand trees and only one dare fall from tree to simply wood. A tree no more. Each and every lustrous, strong, swaying, flirting, elm or oak, each and every pine pining for her. None can support this girl. Sylvan sleep need a broken hope fall flat, a sacrificial bled, only one strong enough to be so weak. Five thousand trees never held by this angel passed on by. Better to be held in death just the once than never held by her at all. Five thousand trees, one she sees. It's okay. You doing okay? So just random pressed another. These aren't gonna get the ohm in between because these are my own <laughs> writings. <laughs> Incidentally, I posted some of the meditation class tonight, I think by now, so. This is, uh, Suffer. Uh, it has a, a deck. I don't know what the right term is. A, a subtitle? Yeah, that could be it. And that's Slings and Arrows. This is called Suffer, Slings and Arrows. Oh boy, I just remembered this is a hard one to actually say aloud. Well, we'll try. You'll know right away the first line. Seashell shredded souls, God forsaken goals, broken back and battered heart, we suffer. You used to care. I thought you were different. She suffers me these slings. Cupid's arrow off her mark, fumble hopeless in the dark. You used to ask me, how do I feel? You'd hold me. It's a tiff, a fight I'm sure some might say. It's terrifying torture, weak and humble, barely mumble, and all I ever want to say. She told me, stop saying that, just the other day. The final curse, it's getting worse. I used to love loving you. Past tense. Our peace of forever busted by a stroke of her faster clock. I can't fight no more. What's it ever for? I'm here to love. I'm here to love. The peaceful dove and olive branch, now dead of lack of love. My forever suffers on. Forever. She says she can't make it work. We hardly tried. She says she, she is no good at relationships. We hardly tried. She's done with men, she says, and then, and that's when, yes, and then she holds my hand. <clears throat> Hello, T. Read another in a moment, maybe we have a candle for George with us, and uh, I don't know, probably doesn't really amount to much of a look around <laughs> in the loft, but uh, in a little bit we'll be able to see the moon, uh, although there's a leaf blown by, uh, a few leaves blown by, that's pretty cool, uh, it may be too... Uh, Windy, oh, uh, sorry, cloudy to see the moon. Hey, cloudy. Guess that means a cup of tea. A sip of tea. From a cloudy cup. So, 
Uh, my thumb just moved and now we're on a, uh, that was Suffer and this is called Sunset. Inches from beauty, inching towards, still searing, my molten orb. Quite a sight to be sure, I wait and watch and will her down. Come sunset, let me see the beauty as you gather up against insistent darknesses. I've had enough of ghoul and shadows since you lit my life. I need a rest. Show me something pretty. Soon. This is a uh, this is untitled number one twenty CXX. Private lesson, but I'm sitting in. Not so sure it's private still, maybe semi. Arching, floating across the floor, spiraling in her space. Curves she serves, hips to knees, brow to nose, palm to crease, heel to toes, pulsing, shining, sweeping, raining, undulate, free spirit, spinal pleasure writhing, private lesson, movement loving movement, and I'm sitting in, not so sure she sang, still, she may have. That was uh, me at a private music lesson, which of course I'm never invited to. <laughs> and uh, I was just watching how she moved to the music and never even heard the singing. This is untitled 138 C X X X V I I I. Short one. Enter now, boulder. Run rippling away. Circles. Water runs. Scared straight. I'm just skimming one or two to see if they are at all. The, the way that I'm viewing them on this doesn't help me uh, sort of go through the uh, topics. They're just kind of random. So. If I was curating, I'd go through a few topics to find something. There's a... Try this. This is uh, untitled 145 CXLV. And I think I'll switch the view for this because of what the cat's doing. Remember, the idea here is not just <laughs> to capture you all to listen to my vacation slides, you know, my poetry. Just to remind you that you can be your own solace. You know, after we sought the solace of the masters during the exegesis, during the uh, the new 
crisis. I don't know how well this hood is going to work, but I'm just laying in the bed here because of where the cat is. I see uh, Sid just joined. Hello, Sid. We're actually the lamp that we were adjusting earlier is a lamp that Sid made me, so we're you're seeing me thanks to Sid. But another way to look at that is that you can blame Sid that you're seeing me. So this is untitled 145. Another evening, broken-hearted stars abounding, the slightest crescent. Wailing silently, waning in a frozen void, comets whirling unbeknownst, the same for every meteoroid. Another evening, sun long since dipped neath the far lining trees, brings its blazings beneath the blurring point, takes with it each in equal measure the light, the heat, the hope, the day and each eye beneath there keen to look above. Another evening, plumes rise across the lands, tailpipes cough out wispy warning. Another couple of hundred thousand needy babies born. Another evening. It's the night in which the moon is finally about to slip into disappearing taking with her any stray romantic notions, any idle oglers. But Venus rises and lights the night, cherishing the fallen moon. Mother of Aeneas, mother of Cupid, you remain sustaining. O Venus, being of beauty, wife to the ugly fantasy of war, you remain sustaining. O Venus, you saved the moon, we rarely noted, we barely noted, lest she's full. O oh, Venus, you saved our nearest and no one ever knew. It was just another evening. Across a wedded globe, no one knew, and fewer noticed. The moon dissolved, the stars enshrouded, the sun a memory, at once a hope. The planets and their mythos long forgotten. Time was, we were all Celtic. Time was, we were all shamans. Time was, we were all natives. Time was, we all saw the sky, moon or no. Time was, we all saw the sky, comet spray or no. Time was, we all saw the sky, no reason other than the night. Time was, and now it's gone. Time was, and now it's gone. Another evening, but now it's gone. So that was pretty cool that Sid joined and we had the line about Celtics. <laughs> uh, I'm skipping a couple of these because they will take me too long to read to figure out if it makes sense. Uh, but also... Uh, a lot of the poems that I write uh, have plays on words that really work if you're reading. Uh, and a lot of them have layout things that also work with your reading. Here's an example. This is just like a four-line poem, and I'll let you see what I mean. It's called Unbroken. And it's, uh, uh, I'm trying to decide if I should read it first or show you first. How about we do it together? And of course I have to guess that you're able to see it and try not to hit the close button. But let's see if that will work. Something like that. A heart is just a dented circle. A circle is just a stronger heart. So that one probably doesn't work so well because it really helps to see the, the uh, fantastic uh, masterpiece of a drawing that I have. <laughs> a heart is just a dented circle. A circle is just a stronger heart. This one I recognize the title of. Uh, 
This one's called The Blues. So we'll read it for Ted. We'll read it for Doug. We'll read it for James and Mindy. We'll read it for Mississippi Fred McDowell. Silently mustering music, throats burst with song, chords pull at my senses, lush strings tickle and excite, each moat afloat, here in my dark and dismal room. So that's an example of H-E-A-R, uh, but that really helps to read. I think this is a fun one. I uh, wonder if I can search. I don't think I can search at this. There's a Sedona. This is uh, called Sedona at Noon. Shadows born of the sky, taken under the wings of trees. Morning stretch, now rest. Safe again. Funhouse yoga soon to come, then slip away before the pallets. Ochres, cimarrones, a dying sun's funeral colors. This is a, a poem I wrote for a close friend of mine and his wife, or fiance at the time, I suppose. That's probably why I wrote it, but I don't quite remember. But it's called Rob and Elizabeth, and I wrote this for my dear friend. Uh, my dear, 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 dear friend, I wrote this poem, Rob and Elizabeth, for my very, very, very dear friend Conrad and his lovely wife Julie. You didn't see that coming, did you? This is for Robin Elizabeth. Please don't let your love become rare and special. Rather, allow it to be common as air, in and through the everyday. Love is the breath of hope. Love should be as welcome as rain, healing as laughter, ephemeral as sun rays, lofty as our moon. Let the shape of your love be special, but the love itself, common, every day, every day. This is probably a hard one. I think I've performed this one before, and I'm expecting I won't keep you all up too much longer. Uh, but I think when I perform that kind of move, you know, the whole of the body, and uh, in the loft, I can't really do that anyway, and I'm certainly not uh, feeling like I'm ready to do that anyway, even if it weren't for the loft. So blame the loft and then take the blame myself. This is called Ready, Aim, Inspire. Ready, Aim, Inspire. It just, it's not just now. I should have tea first. Are you okay, Saki? You okay over there, buddy? It's not just now and then, it's daily, time and again, the yearning, pulling. At once, I, I am the archer's bow, strung tight, curvaceous, solid, stolid, knocked and ready. I am the archer's arrow, swift and cutting on a course, sight in sight, fletched and flying, whistling to its unfound promised mark. I am the archer's glove. Ensuring surest grip, supple suede joining leather, clutch the bow, silent. I am the archer's string, 
nodded at the end slim and strong bent then straight resistant and willing singing all at once i am the target painted bright blushing heart flung open welcoming an easy mark stand and wait i am the archer effortless mindful deadly all at once eros cupid may retire for you do inspire such lust and desire in me through me all at once take your stand here hold my hand hold on tight this might be right draw the bow let it go set your aim there is no shame offer up yourself all at once since we're doing this little thingy that one's actually I don't know if you can see it but and that one's actually designed to be read by a second person who reads at the same I don't know if you can see that who reads at the each of these lines at the same time so it comes into sort of a chorus but Zaki uh, did not read his part so what are you going to do? Oh, well, I'll read you this. Maybe our last one. This is, uh, this is, uh, called Floyd Lee. And I think it's kind of a story one, so you, I don't have to give you any news about it you'll hear it but this is a blues one this is called Floyd Lee I found the Mississippi Delta neath the broken streets of NYC fedora with a feather guitar with a soul he played his blues and his fingers wept squeezed some wrinkled eyes to forget and tightened them tighter when he was ready to receive a memory of lost faith, a girl done him wrong. His legs akimbo, keeping a bit a beat. The mic jammed into a mouth harp's holster. He cupped it, cried out, and some light left him with each wail, leaving more a bluesman. Dollar bills fell into his ramshackle case. A big man with a stroller stopped strolling. A girl tugged out her earphones. Cell phones clicked off. Paces changed. Courses drifted. Years feasting. All that could never return. All that could never be again. Leapt or fell finally to his feet. The unwashed floor lost in subway screeches. All gone for good. All good for good. No thoughts of friends or plans for beaches, no brightnesses, no yeses, no more. All that could never be again leapt or fell finally. He doffed his fedora, slapped at his old friend six strings as if to coax out what had left him long ago. He didn't smile, but smoldered. He didn't sit so much as wince. He didn't so much sing as bleed. He never shone from optimism, and with every bar he eked, he sang further from any memory of justice, sunshine, or thanks. He'd been down so deep he was underneath. He'd been below not just the city, but hope. He'd been below so far so long he was now beneath. 
I walked off, only taking a smile he traded his heart for my teeth. We'd struck an unwrit bargain, his joys for my happier commute. That was Floyd Lee. And that was, uh, That's that's a pretty memorable one. Okay. So one last one. Again, learning to find soothing in our own acts of creativity. And through this, we continue in a community together. I'll give you an idea of the sort of uh, reason that it's easier to view the poetry that I write than not. Uh, it's very hard to aim this, but uh, there we go. So if you see this, I don't know if I can zoom. Yeah, so I'll read this to you in a moment, but you can see how, like, I wrote leaps in a way that, you know, it's leaping. So anyway, uh, this is the only poem I think that I've written that I have to uh, give it the fine print first, which is uh, I'm really tired, but uh, this is a poem that just purely out of creativity. I wrote about suicide, but I know that when somebody mentions it, you're supposed to call all kinds of help because it's a sign of them looking for help, and I'm not. But, and anyway, this poem was written uh, August of 99, so this is 17 years ago or so. <clears throat> it's called Balcony. It offers some of each, both in and out, both here and there, and I want to say, I think I'll jump, end it all, or start anew. But fearing counselors and helpline helplessness, Paperwork and police, perhaps. Professionals. I hedge. Step from the edge. To say, I contemplate the freedom of a swim through the space between here and the ground below. Shakespeare leaps to mind. How perfect. Wasn't it on some ivied trellis and balcony that the stars uncrossed for our young lovers and drove them sweetly, mercifully to... So I hedge, step back from the edge, and say, does it count if I contemplate, contemplate, if I contemplate contemplating leaping, or just as well, I fell. So, anyway, there's a particular one I wanted to share, but I'm sure it's untitled. X L I X V O three seven two point four. So I don't expect uh I'll just randomly find it and on this iPad. I don't think I can search for it. But I will look to see yeah, there's no there's no apparent no, maybe there is. Let's see. Maybe there is. Maybe that's a search button. Well, that's interesting. There is a search. I should clarify. It's interesting to me, not you watching me search on a computer from your computer oh there we go so there is a search function and I have just yeah but I think the search just searches uh the titles of them that's what it seems like it's doing so it doesn't search into the documents and there's no way that i can remember the title of the one i was thinking so 
So I think that's the end of our time. And also now I've gotten into a weird mode on this, so I'm turning off the app. So, so if you are listening to this and you're feeling that you may have it in you to carry on. then I would suggest a good use of your energies is to see how you can serve. Because to serve is to lose sight of one's ego. To engage in creative act of empathy is to share humanity with other humans because I don't know that it's enough to be human or humane, whatever that means but to share that humanity consciously oh, now that's something and so I know some of you are still hurting Frustrated, confused, nauseated. And I've heard from so many people with their particulars vis a vis this situation. But if there's a course to be charted, be very good to chart it together. This is where we begin to harvest the fruits of our practice. And perhaps for some of this, for some of us, this is where we begin to stand in our barren fields looking at our neighbor's crop coming in and saying, why didn't I develop a practice? Can I come to your place for dinner? So, if you have the dinner, if you have the energy, better to be in service than to be in gloat. So, my wish my expectation of you is that if you are in a place that you can do and be and give and share and support and listen and open to, open for and let that be your path now and if you're still in need there's, there's no moralization it's not like oh you got left behind or you're not as well off as somebody or you made poor decisions. No, you're just, you're still in need of support. And I would like to point out that the supporters need supportees exactly as much as supportees need supporters. So, I'm going to read a, I shouldn't say that, I don't mean to say that, I apologize. I'm planning to read, because I don't know if, if I'll find it while I have you, but I'm planning to read in a very short bit of time, 
and maybe we'll end that way. Uh, I almost just started quoting, paraphrasing by myself, and I thought, oh, oh my goodness, I actually, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I, I should be able to have it on the internet like sort of thing here. Okay, I think I got it. There we go. So this is uh So this is uh Kalu Gurbran from the Prophet. This is on giving this is something I quote to people oh so many times, oh so often. And this gets that idea that I was just mentioning the the supportee needs the supporter as much as the supporter needs the supportee. And please don't try and say that six times fast. This is Kelly Ugarbron on giving. Then said a rich man, speak to us of giving. And he answered, you give but little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of yourself that you truly give. For what are your possessions but things you keep and guard for fear you may need them tomorrow? And tomorrow, what shall tomorrow bring to the overprudent dog burying bones in the trackless sand as he follows the pilgrims to the holy city? And what is fear of need but need itself? Is not dread of thirst when your well is full, thirst that is unquenchable? There are those who give little of the much which they have, and they give it for recognition, and their hidden desire makes their gifts unwholesome. And there are those who have little and give it all. These are the believers in life and the bounty of life, and their coffer is never empty. There are those who give with joy, and that joy is their reward. And there are those who give with pain, and that pain is their baptism. And there are those who give, and know not pain in giving, nor do they seek joy, nor give with mindfulness of virtue. They give as in yonder valley the myrtle breathes its fragrance into space. Though the hands of such as these God speaks, through the hands of such as these God speaks, and from behind their eyes he smiles upon the earth. It is well to give when asked, but it is better to give unasked, through understanding, and to the open-handed the search for one who shall receive is joy greater than giving, and is there aught you would withhold? All you have shall some day be given. Therefore give now that the season of giving may be yours and not your inheritors. You often say, I would give but only to the deserving. The trees in your orchard say not so nor are the flocks in your pasture. They give that they may live, for to withhold is to perish. Surely he who is worthy to receive his days and his nights is worthy of all else from you. And he who has deserved to drink from the ocean of life deserves to fill his cup from your little stream. I just read the word ocean and I saw my dear friend Jeffrey Login, and I remember that I just learned yesterday the word in Dutch because I'm Dutch is Z is the word for sea like ocean in Dutch and I was just reading the word ocean and saw Jeffrey I just learned ocean is Z and he who has deserved to drink from the Z of life deserves to fill his cup from your little stream. And what desert greater shall there be than that which lies in the courage and the confidence, nay, the charity of receiving? I want to go back to that because that's the key. 
and he who has deserved to drink from the ocean of life deserves to fill his cup from your little stream. And what desert greater shall there be than that which lies in the courage and the confidence, nay, the charity of receiving? And who are you that men should rend their bosom and unveil their pride, that you may see their worth naked and their pride unabashed? See first that you yourself deserve to be a giver and an instrument of giving. For in truth it is life that gives unto life, while you, who deem yourself a giver, are but a witness, and you receivers, and you are all receivers. Assume no weight of gratitude, lest you lay a yoke upon yourself and upon him who gives. So, there's a little bit more, but you've got the gist and you're tired of me. The charity of receiving. The one who receives gives, at the very least, the ability, the opportunity, the half of the relationship into which the other can give, can be a giver, can practice giving. And so, if you find yourself substantially less troubled now, after a day, than you were yesterday, and the crisis no longer seems to be yours or your front burner. Perhaps you can open your eyes, your heart, your wallet, your arms, your ears to those still in crisis. And in doing so, perhaps you might recognize that your offering to them is your receiving from them. And so offer while saying thank you. and receive while feeling you're welcome. So if I can leave you with one last word of wisdom, I'm Dutch, which none of you will understand, except for Jeffrey. Much love. Thank you. I'll check in in the morning, and we'll post another meditation. Ram Shanti Ram, Ram Shanti Ram.